my name is Liliana Alcantara and I've been volunteering for the pre-medical program in La Ceiba, Honduras from June 28th till August 2nd. I was volunteering at the Clinica Metropolitana in the Hospital Atlantida in La Ceiba. Um, my local Broader View coordinator was really helpful. He was really kind and accommodating. Um, he always made sure we had everything we needed and he also um, gave us rides to the clinic and the hospital, which isn't included in the program, but he did that anyways. Um, the most surprising thing that I experienced at the program was how hands-on it was. We were able to put in catheters, take out stitches, clean wounds, and a lot more, which I was not expecting at all. I was also shocked by how like behind some of the medical techniques are because they don't have the money to um, do the more modern techniques, modern technology. And that was really surprising as well. Um, I w at the accommodation, I was really surprised at how nice it was. I, was, I wasn't I was expecting how nice it was. Um, it was always very clean. I didn't really have any problems with bugs or anything. Um, the only frustrating thing was that we have to use a we have to turn on a pump to use water and we lose we lose power a lot so sometimes we wouldn't have water and that was a little frustrating but it, you could work through that um, most surprising thing about the country um, I've been to Honduras before so I wasn't surprised by much the only thing that's a little frustrating is that the, there's rolling blackouts so the power will go out almost every day around 10.30 for about three hours. So that's a little bit surprising. Um, my most difficult thing to experience here at the program was, um, again, seeing how behind they are with their technology. And it's also difficult to see how many patients can afford the treatment that they need so then they don't get the treatment. Um, at the accommodation, it was difficult when we didn't have water or electricity for those three hours. Um, the plumbing also isn't that great, so sometimes you'd have to pour water into the toilet, things like that. Um, in the country, it was difficult to see, like to hear about the corruption in the government and like just to hear stories about how they take money away from hospitals. And it's hard to see that since you're working at a hospital. So some tips for future volunteers, clothing wise it's always hot and humid so bring lightweight clothing, um, try to bring lightweight scrubs because it gets really hot in the clinic, um, especially when the power goes out. And it also rains a lot so if you want to bring a light rain jacket you don't really need it but it, it would work too if you brought it. Donation wise, lots of, bring lots of gauze. The clinic is always low on gauze. Also, medical tape is a good thing to bring. Gloves, face masks, also painkillers if you want to bring that. Also, um, you're supposed to bring a blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope. So you can use that while you're here and then donate it after. And also, if you donate your old scrubs, that's also a good idea. Um, again, the weather, it's always hot and humid. Um, also bring lots of bug spray and sunscreen because there are so many mosquitoes. Okay, some other things that volunteers should know. Um, bring extra money to buy boots and caps for surgery because you have to wear the, the sterile boots and caps. And it's cheaper if you buy them here, so you should just bring money for that. Also, try to bring four to six pairs of scrubs. I didn't know that before, so I only brought three pairs. And that was hard because... I wasn't able to wash clothes every day, and you always need two scrubs at the hospital, one for surgery and one for the emergency room, so it's good to have at least four pairs of scrubs. Also bring lots of gloves and hand sanitizer. You're always going to be using gloves and hand sanitizer. Um, all in all, this was an experience of a lifetime, really. I did not expect to see all the things I saw. Um, I would have never been able to see, like, someone draining a hematoma, a brain bleed at home, which was amazing experience. You wouldn't be able to see that at home. Um, and my accommodation was way better than I expected. I'm a vegetarian, so the meals were a little hard to get used to, but I just started asking the cook to um, fry me an egg with my meals to get more protein, and that was fine. 
And as far as security goes, I never felt unsafe. Like, I always felt safe, so that wasn't even a problem. Um, my favorite memory during the program was shadowing the neurosurgeon. Um, we shadowed him, shadowed him when he did consults, and it was just cool seeing him do all the tests and stuff. And also, we saw him remove a spinal tumor, which was amazing. We saw him drain a hematoma, like I said before, which was amazing. And um, my favorite experience in country, I have a lot of favorite experience, but it would probably be whitewater rafting, um, Rio Cangrejal. The views are amazing. I really, you really should do whitewater rafting if you don't do anything else. We were able to go cliff jumping at one point. You get fresh pineapple when you're done whitewater rafting. And then there's a really good restaurant there that has amazing food. And there's a bar and it's, it's really nice. There's a pool, an infinity pool that like go, looks over the mountains. It's beautiful. Um, as far as a broader view, support in USA goes. Um, I got, I always received prompt emails back, like responses, so that was never a problem. Um, and the website, I thought the website was a little hard to navigate at times, but all in all it was really helpful. The orientation guide is really helpful. Um, the packing list is really helpful too. And the way I found out about a broader view, I was just looking for a pre-med program in Honduras, so I just googled that and I came across the website, I found really good reviews, all the reviews are really good, so then I went for it. And